Whoopi Goldberg, David Spade, and Buster Rhymes, and yeah, Tim Curry, who was in actually all three of the Rugrats movies, all made cameos in the first one. Now that I've said that, let's talk about the Rugrats in Paris, the movie. So, yeah, this was one of the more highly anticipated sequels I think I've ever wanted to see in my life as a kid. I mean, I already loved Rugrats, and I loved Ru the Rugrats movie. So, yeah, the fact that we were getting another movie, you better believe it, I was excited. The fact that we get a tie-in TV movie to that. Yeah, Nickelodeon and Rugrats did it first before Marvel did it, Pavokes. And, yeah, the tease that R Chunky was getting a mommy. I didn't know the status quo was gone trope back then, but at the same time, that's what I thought was going to happen. That they were going to build up the idea, but then not follow through with it because, well, Chucky can't have a mother because he has to have continue have that continuous arc. But they followed through with it. I mean, and I appreciate the fact that they did so. So, I have a complicated history with the film because, like, for the longest time, and even now, I'd still say the first movie's better, even though most would say this is better. But I can absolutely understand where they're coming from, and I'm inclined to objectively agree. Here's the plot. During Grandpa Lou's wedding to Lulu, voiced by Debbie Reynolds, only briefly, but at the same time she's in the show, so okay. Chucky gets sad during the dance scene with the mothers and their children because he unfortunately doesn't have a mother himself and begins to wish that he did have a new mother to share his life with and to take care of him. But and at the same time that this is happening, Chaz, his father, is missing Chucky's mother, his late wife, and wishing that, wanting to find somebody else to share his life with and to help him raise and take care of Chucky. So while Chaz is venturing into the dates, Angelica, as the Bob father, because she'd recently watched The Godfather, is making the promise to help him f find a new mo mother. Meanwhile, in Paris... Stu is sent over a, a reptar animatronic for the Euro Reptar Land Amusement Park run by the greedy and power-hungry Coco LaBouche, voiced by Susan Sarandon. But then when the reptar animatronic breaks down, she demands Stu come to the park, flying over to Paris to fix it, and sure enough, the whole gang sets out to Paris, babies in, in tow. And, yeah, we're introduced to some new characters in the process. I mean, there's also Jean-Claude, voiced by John Lithgow, who's Coco's evil assistant, evil loyal assistant. There's Kira, Coco's assistant, who's actually very nice. Fifi, a French poodle who Spike takes a liking to, but she's not named by name in the film, and... Not really given a personality other than she's a female spike. And, of course, there's Kimmy. The newest Rugrat, as was said. And yeah, that could I can't really go into too much detail as to how exactly she's the new Rugrat. Because it's kind of a... Because it's spoiler territory, but... I mean... I... Well, a lot of people complained about how the show went downhill since Kimmy came on. I think that the show managed to remain consistent... Yeah, she pretty much is just a female Tommy, but at the same time, she does have interactions and a dynamic and a specific kind of relationship with one of the characters in the show when she comes into the show. That it, I do really appreciate the fact that because these two characters are so different, that dynamic is important and adds something new to the show. So yeah, with the reveal of who Chucky's new mom ends up being, I'm not going to give it away, but... It is obvious on rewatches, and at the same time, I appreciate the fact that it is kind of built up subtly. You're not, well, it is apparent, you're not, it's not thrown in your face. It's not something that you're bombarded with, and then you realize is the only actual possibility. I mean, granted, if you know how Kimmy is ending up in the show, you get the picture right there and then, but at the same time, yeah, you... This is a dynamic that is worked really well into this movie. And yeah, the movie itself, it's really funny. This movie has a tone far more consistent and far more in line with the show than the first movie. The first movie took a far more dramatic 
and dark, darker turn, which it had to because it was trying to be bigger than the regular show. This can be big, it manages to be bigger, bigger than the show in the same way, but at the same time, doesn't compromise the tone the same way that the first one did. Again, I appreciate the fact that the first one did do something different, and I think it was more effective for that reason, but this is equally, almost equally effective, if not just equally effective, because it doesn't compromise, and it manages to do it. So, yeah, let's talk about Susan Sarandon as the villain. Coco is an entertaining villain. She, The way she yells and screams, she demands that she get things done. And her arc in the movie is basically Angelica convinces her, tells her about how Chaz is, has a son and Chaz can be the man she's engaged to who has a son so that way she can get, convince her boss, played by Mako, to help her to make her his successor so that she can take over his company. Uh... And that she'll ultimately end up being horrible for both Chucky and Chaz. And Chucky just cannot get behind liking her whatsoever. And would rather have the princess in the Reptar Amusement Park be his new mommy instead. Uh, also, Tommy's kind of pushed to the role of sidekick this time. Because the mo movie focuses way more on Chucky than any other regret. But at the same time, that's reasonable because Chucky does hold his attention and I give Christine Cavanaugh a lot of credit that she helped still make Chucky interesting with her voice work and you have John Lithgow as the associate he's yucking it up to think he'd be in another movie coming out the year after Shrek in which he would play the main villain trying to trying to marry a character to get something value of value to him, and the movie would end with somebody having to stop a wedding. <laughs> it's fun. Crazy how life works sometimes, isn't it? And yeah, the jokes in this movie, they're really, really funny. You get a lot of humor where, like, yes, you get a lot of the toilet humor that Rugrats is used to, but at the same time, you get humor that's thrown in there in the same way as it is in a lot of the show where... It's not exactly inappropriate, but it's definitely something a child would not understand or get. And yeah, the fact that it can do that, it's something to appreciate. It's something to admire. The... If I have any complaints, I'd say that because it doesn't take itself quite as seriously, it doesn't have the emotional impact that the first one did. But at the same time, this movie still does take itself seriously. It does have some of the same emotional impact, even though it doesn't go anywhere near the same stance or direction that the first one did. And there's the appreciation of how I you notice how actually a lot darker Coco is as a villain when you hear in a scene where she's talking about removing footprints, fingerprints from a crime scene. We're wondering what the heck did she have done that requires her to have fingerprints removed from a crime scene, and then not to mention she makes the off-color remark of having a child's heart in a jar, but then you think it's, she's talking in hyperbole, but then she's so serious about it, you wonder, does she actually have a child's heart in a jar? How messed up exactly is this woman? Not to mention John claude chasing after the babies and the robo-snail animatronic at the end of the, the movie. My God, does that go... Does it get nutty? And yeah, the climax with the babies in the Reptar animatronic stomping through the city trying to get to Notre Dame to stop the wedding. Wow. You thought the craziness in the Reptar wagon scene with the Reptar wagon careening through the city and managing to its escape destruction at every turn. This, it does not compare to it. This is even nuttier. This takes it up to 11. So yeah, there is the fact that this movie is going all out with its setting, with its characters, with its comedy. There is so much to just really eat up and just really be impressed by. And the fact that the writing isn't compromised by it either is also something to be impressed by. So, ultimately, yeah, you're huge into Rugrats and you're huge into good storytelling, then this is a trip you'll certainly 
what I take.